It's a great storyline, and we're grateful to have the opportunity to achieve something so special. The drive to a dynasty stays alive. Coming from Winnipeg last year, I'm looking to take that away from him and get that third ring in my finger. Great Cup. Kickoff is next. From the CFL's heartland, Canada's biggest game is back in Saskatchewan for the fourth time and hosting the first Great Cup between two storied franchises in over 70 years. Winnipeg and Toronto haven't met on this stage since the Mud Bowl of 1950. And while the Argonauts have won the Cup more than any other team, the Blue Bombers are on the verge of history, looking to become just the second franchise to win three in a row since the CFL officially formed in 1958. Welcome to the 109th Grey Cup on TSN. Championship Sunday and Glenn Suter, one of the interesting subplots, Andrew Harris against his old team and his old understudy, Brady Oliver. Highly motivated Andrew Harris against his old team. This is his third Grey Cup in a row. Two with Winnipeg, the last two, his first with the Toronto Argonauts. And yes, Brady Oliveira, who took over for Andrew Harris, both grew up in Winnipeg, Manitoba. In fact, both went to the same high school. The Argos wearing their dark blue jerseys, the Bombers choosing white, which they wore when they won the previous two Grey Cup games. Javon Leak back for the return, and Dejan Brissett as well. It was the Bombers winning the toss. They've deferred to the second half, so Argo football to start it off. Championship Sunday. Where else would you rather be? On the prairie for the Grey Cup. And it is underway off the foot of Mark Leggio, and he's coming down the leap at the 30, 35, and he gets up across the 40 before he is taken down. And on comes McLeod Bethel Thompson, a backup to Ricky Ray, the last time the Argos won the Grey Cup five years ago in 2017. And this year led the Canadian Football League in passing yards with over 4,700, his best season in five in the CFL. Led the Toronto Argonauts to a first place finish in the division, 11 wins. And it's his first year as the undisputed number one quarterback for the Argos. Handing off A.J. Olet, who's been a big part of the story of that offense when he took over from Andrew Harris midway through the season after Harris got hurt. Let's take a look at that starting offense for the Toronto Argonauts. Dejon Allen starts at right tackle. He's their nominee for outstanding offensive linemen this year. And you take a look at the receivers. Curly Gittens led all Toronto Argonaut receivers his first 1,000-yard season. Olette well, stays in the backfield. I'm curious to see how they use Andrew Harris in this game early on. Second and six. The throw, it's broken up. Intended for Tavares Daniels, the safety. Brandon Alexander coming in to knock it away. Brandon Alexander's just playing the middle. He's free back from injury from a year ago, and he steps in. He's a presence in the middle. He's a physical safety that'll come up and hit you, and he's setting the tone early for the Bomber defense. I'm just gonna sit and so John Haggerty from Sydney, Australia, first-year Argo punter. He kicks it away to the best returner in the league, Janarian Grant. He had a punt return for a touchdown last week in the Western Final. And a shorter return after a 50-yard punt by Haggerty. And here is the most outstanding player. Back-to-back -back years, Zach Kolaris. What a story. Over 4,000 yards passing, 37 touchdown passes, 70%. It's a career high he's had in the passing department. And since he joined the Winnipeg Blue Bombers back in 2019, Picking up 
picking up five yards as we look at that Blue Bomber offense in this great cup. Well, arguably one of the best offensive linemen to ever play in the Canadian Football League. Stanley Bryant, this year's outstanding offensive lineman award winner. And then you go to the receiving core and tailbacks. Dalton Schoen as a rookie in his rookie season. The rookie of the year in the Canadian Football League, but also led all receivers in receiving yards. Oliveira had his best season, over 1,000 yards rushing, taking over from Andrew Harris. Back in his hands. Hendricks is there. Argo defense stepping up. Tavares McFadden in as well, but it's Hendricks stuffing that run and forcing the Bombers to punt. Well, first... We wanted to see, and I think a lot of Winnipeg fans wanted to see, if Zach Kolaris would get out there. We all knew he was going to start. He had the ankle. Not a surprise that the Bombers were going to try to establish the run early in the second half of the West Final. The run game took over. Mark Leggio punts it away to Javon Lee at the 34. On the 47 yards. Good return by Lee to get it up across the 50 for McLeod Bethel Thompson. They were two and out of the first possession. Coming into this Grey Cup game, the East Division champions, the Toronto Argonne first in the East. Claire Hanna talked about it, Glenn. Slow start, but they finished strong. Beat Montreal last week in the East final. Yeah, 11 wins. Number one team in the East, and I mentioned off the top, McLeod Bethel Thompson, I felt his best year, most consistent. Nine Eastern All-Stars. And a team that matches up well against the Bombers. They went two and out. First possession. First down now from the 50. Taking the handoff. Rolling to the right. And he's looking for Curly Gittins just as he was being hit. So out of bounds. And a second and 10 is coming up as Adam Big Hill on that bomber defense applying some heat. Yeah, let's look at the front seven starting up front with Willie Jefferson. Four-time All-Canadian. Willie Jefferson, another big season with 10 knockdowns. He'll get his hands up in the throwing lane. There's the leader of this whole team, Adam Big Hill. Led the team again in defensive tackles. And in the West Final, Winston Rose, a big pick. Winnipeg beating the BC Lions. Andrew Harris in the ball game, staying in to protect. Throwing up second down complete. And the first, first down of this game goes to Markeith Ambles. Getting it inside the Winnipeg 45 and a gain of 15 yards. Yeah, nice throw by McLeod Bethel Thompson on time. He's going to take just two steps back. Launch it right over the middle. Marquise Ambles flashes right in front of Brandon Alexander. This time he can't jump that crossing route quite as fast because he had a seam right beside him. He got a ring with the 2018 stamps but got hurt two days before the game. Wasn't able to play in it. Andrew Harris, first great cut carry 2022. And he picks up six yards. Good start for the breakup MVP of 2019 with Winnipeg. Yeah, think back to that 2019 season. That season, he was highly motivated going into the Grey Cup, was not the nominee for outstanding Canadian for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers after a tremendous regular season because he was suspended that, that year. Was motivated and ended up the outstanding Canadian and MVP. Second and four now after that. Harris carry. Bethel Thompson. For Ambles, but not close. It falls incomplete, and we have a third down coming up. Yeah, that one's on McLeod Bethel Thompson. He had Marquise Ambles open on the corner route. Ambles ran a nice route. Take a look at former Calgary Stampeder is going to come out and run that corner route. Gets inside position and then flashes his hips to the sideline. And there was a window there. Even though Desmond Lawrence was falling underneath it, and that may have been what distracted Bethel Thompson. So veteran kicker Boris B in his first great cup will try to score the first points of this game. John Haggerty to put it down right in the middle from about 47 yards away for B. It's up. And it's good. And the Argos, on their second possession, get close enough to get on the board. 47-yarder by Beatty and a 3-0 lead. Grey Cup, 109. First meeting of the Bombers and Argos in 72 years in this big game. And that was close. Pins and the
the Bombers looked even better. Red hot start and ended up with a club record 15 wins. Yeah. Franchise record 15 wins. Zach Kolaris outstanding offensively. Of course, the MOP. They had the outstanding lineman, the outstanding rookie, coach of the year. Don't think for a second that's not motivating the Toronto Argonauts here tonight that they took home all that hardware on Thursday. Four big awards for the Bombers on Thursday night. Play back first down from the 40 and a deep look. Calera's for Dalton Schoen. So close. Off his hands. Royce Mechie, Jamal Peters were there. But Schoen, the rookie of the year, was over. So close to having a big grab in his first great cup. Yeah, it looks like by design, safety Royce Menchie was trying to just poach the crossing route, so he is too shallow to really help on this, but the guy who makes the play with straight hustle is the guy who led the league in interceptions, Jamal Peters, fighting to get back there. A little help from Menchie, and they just get there in time. That close. A big play Winnipeg. It's a second and ten now. that one a bit too far and it was Peters coming in and making him pay anyway as it falls incomplete third down and ten. You know the, the Toronto Argonauts defense has all year created turnovers. They are a physical group. We saw on that incompletion Jamal Peters who just made the play on the knockdown step up and put a little hit on Brady Oliveira just to make a point and send a message. They led the league in forced Takeaway. So Legio to punt it again, standing at the Winnipeg 26. Javon Lake is back for it. Around the 25, Toronto. Punted 46 yards. Going up the right. He's got some room, and a flag does come out as he gets it up at midfield. First flag of this Grey Cup on that stretch. During the return, illegal block, Toronto, number eight. It's a 10 yard penalty. First down, Toronto. Deshaun Amos called for the illegal block, negating a, a good return by Leak to get it up at midfield. So that ball will come back deeper in the Argo zone to inside the 20. And the push in the back, right at the point of attack. Both the left and Harris in right now. And Harris with the ball and classic Andrew Harris style. How many times do we see that with Winnipeg? Feeling his way through and picking up 10 yards exactly. Now all the conversations we had with Andrew Harris, how he presses the line of scrimmage. He'll take the ball. He'll be patient at times. Sometimes he'll wait for those blocks to get set up in front of him. He got a couple there, one from Ryan Hunter. He just pressed the line. Patience, 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 hit it, and then make sure when you get tackled, you get tackled forward. He had nine rushes for 42 yards and a touchdown in the East Final. He also had one big catch for 30 yards to set up another team. for Tavares Daniels. Mention his third straight Grey Cup. Two with Winnipeg. This one with the Argos. He also played for the BC Lions back in 2011 where he started his CFL career. Ten carries, 65 yards, and most valuable Canadian in that one. Highly motivated in 19 to make a point after his suspension. And I think he's as motivated right here tonight to play against his old team. It was a surprise the week of the Eastern Final that, yes, indeed, he was coming back far earlier than anyone expected from that torn pectoral muscle that happened back in August. Making a statement early on, takes the toss to the left. And perhaps <laughs> the defender and gets even more. Up near midfield and fired up against his old club early on. 
this is why he's so tough to defend against. He can play the physical game. He can be patient and make you miss in the back end when you're when you're in the hole. But he can also get outside with that acceleration. And how about this athleticism? 16-yard gain for number 33 to get them going in the run game. He does not look like he has missed a beat with all that time on. Back last week. Power game from Olette here and a gain of seven more. Both of these running backs can run it with power. Olette has said really becoming better known when Harris was on the sidelines hurt. Well, he's been outstanding. Oh, you know, over 500 yards rushing when he replaced Andrew Harris. But yeah, when they work in tandem, think back to that Eastern final, he had 90 yards of offense, Olette, when he got his opportunity. So they're a great one two punch in the run game. So far, they had a big presence in that Eastern final against the Alouette, scoring the first two touchdowns for Toronto. Harris and Olette. Olette in, faking to him at the top to the right. The plate coming back and turning up. And that is Brandon Banks in another great cup, looking for that elusive first win and his first touch of the big game in 2022. I asked McLeod Bethel Thompson this week about playing against Jackson Jeffcoat and Willie Jefferson. And he said with both of those guys, you got to watch to make sure that A, you get them blocked up, but B, that they don't drop and become athletes like linebackers. McLeod Bethel Thompson paying the price for that throw, number 94 in his kitchen. It was a game of six for Brandon Banks playing in great cup number five. The other four, of course, with the Hamilton Tiger Cats. Quickly, Bethel Thompson, and down and incomplete, intended for Daniels. And that's with Desmond Lawrence, who was with the Tiger Cats last year when they lost to Winnipeg in the Grey Cup game. Full blitz there from defensive coordinator Richie Hall. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers putting some pressure on McLeod Bethel Thompson. Guy highly respected across the Canadian Football League, a former head coach in Richie Allen, a former teammate of mine here in Saskatchewan. Outstanding job with this Winnipeg defense. Looking to three-peat here tonight. Second and ten. Argos at the Winnipeg 44. Here come by three with the blitz coming. Jackson Jeffcoat, much like he did in the Grey Cup in 2019. A nightmare for Corner. Josh Raj and the panel dressed a little more warmly than you see them there. Kate and the bunch, and that bunch includes Paul Lapley's now and Bo Levi Mitchell. Great to have them back as well. And this Grey Cup coverage still in the first quarter. Jackson Jeffcoat with the strip of the ball from a cloud Bethel Thompson forcing the first turnover and Winnipeg. From the master and the protege. Well, in that Western final, I mentioned in the second half against the BC Lions, Brady Oliveira just took over the game, and he's the reason that they got to the next level and to the Great Cup Championship with 20 carries for 130 yards, most of them in the second half. A little bit of a slow start here tonight, but that run will get them going. up six more yards for the Bombers. Let's take a look at the starting defense for the Toronto Argonauts and up front the disruptor in Jagera Davis. Seven sacks. This is his sixth consecutive Great Cup appearance in six years in the CFL. Their leading tackler was Enoch Mwamba. Jonathan Jones plays for their defensive nominee and Winton McManus at linebacker. will watch him and Jamal Peters I mentioned led the CFL in interceptions. With six. A couple of big carries for Brady Oliveira. Second down and four. Oliveira again, but that time the door is closed. Jonathan Jones among those putting him down, and a newcomer signed recently. 
recently in Jared Brinkman. You know, this is why I love this matchup in this great cup because this defense with Enoch Mwamba at the middle is designed to combat the rush game for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. They're heavy at defensive tackle at 270 in Dwayne Hendricks and Sean Oakman at almost 290 pounds and then an all-star caliber linebacker in Enoch Mwamba with 75 defensive tackles. He's going to go head-to-head -head with Brady Oliveira all night long. So with the ball at the 43, Leggio will punt and just his side of midfield. No field goal try instead. Trying to get them down deep. Off to the right. And it sails out of bounds right around the 15. Has to get inside the 15 for it not to be a penalty going out. And yep. indeed he did. So good placement by Leggio to get it at the 13. Argos with an early field goal. Lee. The 2022 Grey Cup on TSN from Regina. And to Claire Hanna. Well, he's already had a couple good carries, and this game is personal for Andrew Harris. He spent six seasons with the Bombers, won two Grey Cups, was an MVP, but he also called Winnipeg and calls it still home. And he said the hardest part about going to Toronto, which made it life-altering, was that he had to leave his 14-year-old daughter, Hazel, back in Winnipeg. He said they missed each other like crazy, but she understood what he needed to do, especially given his history with the Bombers. Well, this week, he just, she hasn't really paid that much attention to his football career recently, and she hates the cold, so it not only shocked him, but it brought a tear to his eye when she said, Dad, I want to watch you on Sunday in case it's the last time I ever see you play. And the way he's playing right now, Claire, it doesn't look like it should be his last game. His fourth carry coming into that carry at 32 yards. But you do wonder at age 35 how many more times Andrew player Harris will suit up, especially if he's able to win another Grey Cup today. Well, I hope he continues because it's been an absolute pleasure to watch him play. His former teammate Adam Big Hill's got his bullseye right on him too, right between the three and the three. This is another game inside the game that we will watch. One of the best all-time linebackers in CFL history and Adam Big Hill against the best Canadian tailback in the history of the league. Jackson Jeffco. So quick from the backside. That's Jackson Jeffco on this run. You know, when Andrew Harris early in this game was patient, picked up 10. Well, he was patient that time, too, but Jeffco caught him from behind. Zach Kolaris, back-to-back -back most outstanding player awards, exclusive company as well. As you look at the list, Glenn, that's a really a who's who in wow. CFL history wow. at quarterback. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Anthony Calvillo, all-time leader in passing yards, Doug Flutie in all his championships and 6,000-yard seasons. Played against Doug Flutie and Dieter Brock, and that wasn't fun. <laughs> Flutie in there. That's a safety. With five. But every year he was in the league. But what a run by Polaris. It's coming to Winnipeg in 2019. Good job by Oliveira picking up the block. As Polaris gets it away, it's tipped. It's nearly intercepted by the leader in the CFL in the regular season at picks, Jamal Peters. This is the first time that in this game we've seen Zach Kolaris try to get out and use his mobility. This is one of the things that he's been so dangerous with this year against opposing defenses. When he gets outside of the pocket, his receivers know the scramble rules down pat, and they usually make a big play out of it. Now I'm watching for that ankle. Not quite as mobile as he was through the regular season. Again, that ankle injury just in the deep into the fourth quarter of the West Final. First quarter, Columbus is 0 for 3. Trying again here with some heat coming, and he does finally dump it off and does get his first completion. 
just across midfield to another veteran of Grey Cup's past, Greg Ellingson. But not enough for a first down as the punting unit will come back on again. You know, again, there was no question that Kolaris was going to play in this game. Championship game and what a great season he's had. The question was how mobile would he be? And I, I, he can still move around. He can negotiate the pocket. But he was making big plays on the run through the regular season, and that may be hampered a little bit tonight. So good job done by the Argo defense. That is the third two and out for the Bomber offense now. It's Legio stands at his 45 to punt it away to Javon Lee. Running in to catch it inside the 20. Gets it up to the 30 after a punt of 32, and the quarter comes to an end tight defensive first quarter but the Argos do manage some points and manage to run that football as well 47 yarder by Boris Beatty that's what we have so far 15 minutes through great cup 109 on TSA Through one quarter of the Grey Cup game, the Argos lead at 3 0. But as you look at the numbers, Glenn, it's been difficult in these offenses, especially for Winnipeg's, to get something going. Yeah, well, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers defensively have got the blitz going against McLeod, Bethel, Thompson. We see Jackson Jeffcoat getting more and more involved. He's made a couple of plays. And if you're wondering about the running backs, Andrew Harris, 5 for 36. Brady Oliveira, 4 for 16. So both trying to get some traction, both teams offensively. But defenses can win too. And yes. right now, the defenses have the edge. I was going to say, we didn't talk much about the weather before because the weather is very good this time of year. I mean, it was minus one uh, heading into game time and not much of a win, and the field looks like it's in great shape. But defenses taking charge early on, although we have seen the Argos especially able to run the football. Javon Lake is in the backfield, and there's the attempt for the first catch by Gittins, and it falls incomplete second down. The quick game trying to get it out to Curly Gittins and trying to get him going. I mean, thousand yard season for Curly Gittins, 300 yard games throughout the year. The Wilfred Laurier product, an outstanding season in year three with the Toronto Argonauts. Their leading receiver, and yeah, if your offense needs to find some traction, get it to 19. to Cam Phillips, his first Grey Cup catch. And the Argos are on the move in Bomber territory after a gain of 37 yards. What a great, what a great adjustment by Cam Phillips as he's going to run down the field here on a deep seam. But because McLeod Bethel Thompson once again is facing pressure, he can't get all of it what he wants on the ball. So Cam Phillips tracks it. He cuts underneath the defender for the first big play for the Argos down the field. Saw Jamal Parker in the coverage getting turned around in the Phillips route. Inside the 45, swinging it out to Mark Heath Ambles. And Ambles gets another first down inside the Winnipeg 30. They've got playmakers. We've seen first attempt to Curly Gittins trying to get him going. Marquise Ambles couple of targets for him already and all of a sudden some adjustments being made by the Argos knowing that Winnipeg when they had success in the first quarter went with blitz trying to get the ball out of McBeth's hands quickly and the team made a bully by Mitchell with the Stampeders there from 18 to 21 quickly to the right and it's too far going back to Ambles there the second down coming up for Toronto Pressure off the edge again. Richie Hall digging deep into his playbook to come out with some pressure packages that is forcing Bethel Thompson to just be off his game just a little on some of these throws. I mean, that one was, had a chance to handle, but he had to throw it around the rush. Up over the ball, and the Toronto Argonauts, East Division champions, looking to add to their lead. In the Winnipeg 26. Pressure again, they've got it. Casey Sales to finish it off. But there was a lot of heat up front by Winnipeg. And Bethel Thompson ran out of time. So Boris Beattie will come on to 
see if they can double their lead with another field goal. Diedrich Nichols is going to also get involved in this one. Ja uh, Willie Jefferson moves inside. Again, some exotic style blitzes. Block up front on Jefferson. In the first quarter, Boris Beattie clicked on a 47-yarder. This one will be put down by John Haggerty, 36 yards away. To go two for two and make it a 6 nothing ball game. This time, breaking right, and he missed it. The last one tailed off to the left, and he barely made it, and that one is a miss. So a point on the board instead of three more. And a 4-0 Argo lead in Grey Cup 109. Might have been the biggest story of Grey Cup week. How is Zach Kolaris' injured right ankle? Let's head down and get more from Farhan Lalji. Yeah, Rod, Zach Kolaris has injured that right ankle before his senior year at the University of Cincinnati. He actually broke the ankle and had a plate surgically put into it. Now, the surgeon that did that, Dr. Angelo Colosimo, who works with the University of Cincinnati and with the Cincinnati Bengals, told him at the time, because of the plate that's put in, you will never suffer a catastrophic injury to that ankle again. And in fact, that doctor was watching the game last week and when he saw Zach get hurt he knew he was going to be okay and following the game the Winnipeg medical staff told Kolaris you better call him and thank him because he may have saved you. The two men visited for 10 minutes earlier this week. Zach said thank you and the doctor said I want to sign jersey make sure it's on its way soon. Expect at least that. Thank you for our Quite a story after that injury and he's got a wide open receiver. It is Good. and a deep catch there by Dalton Schoen the rookie of the year a big great cup catch. Yeah, I thought Zach Kolaris was the bionic man, and now we know that he certainly is because this throw, just check it out. He's right down the seam. He's got a window to fit it in there between the safety and the corner, a 39-yard gain. And just like that, both offenses starting to stretch the field a little bit and open things up. Dalton Schoen, what a story. Over 1,400 yards receiving, leading the CFL and receiving touchdowns with 16 as well. And this is first CFL season. Back to the ground. Down as they get deeper into Argo territory, looking for their first points of this Grey Cup. A gain of eight by Oliveira. First four games for Brady Oliveira the regular season, he was trying to be Andrew Harris, and he wasn't having the success that Andrew had. And then he said to me about game five or six, he said, "I just got to be myself. I got to be Brady Oliveira." And since then, outstanding thousand-yard game, good run right there. Thousand-yard season, I should say, and a great run right there. Get him in a second and short. Power package comes in. Extra offensive lineman Liam Dobson, Chris Polinkowski, and the second down and two at the Toronto 23. Handing off, running that ball, getting it inside the 20, and that's enough for another Winnipeg first down. So the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in the offseason after last year's championship season lose Kenny Lawler, their number one receiver, and they pick up Dalton Schoen as a rookie. And what does he do? He goes out and finishes first in all the categories that really matter. Yards, TD catches, average, second down conversions, and the big plays, the 30-plus yards. Dalton Schoen's had a heck of a season and the outstanding rookie in the Canadian Football League. And in at quarterback now, the one who's third in the depth chart, Dakota Prukov, who started his CFL career with the Toronto Argonauts. And he'll throw after the fix. And it's down and just a little bit too far outside intended for Dalton showing inside the five. Well, sometimes this type of strategy works when you put in a backup quarterback, you run a different type of play, different type of offense, a little play action, he rolls out, and the show really doesn't have a chance. I think even if he catches this pass, he is out of bounds by the time Prukop gets it over there. We've seen the Winnipeg do this before, as you say, switch it up at QB. Polaris is back in this game. It's a second and ten now. At the Toronto 20. Four nothing Argos. As Polaris is to throw. The four man rush flags out as he's flushed to the right. Gets rid of it. And it is caught by Greg Ellingson. Nice job working the sideline by Ellingson. Down at the 10. It's the second flag of this game and would look to be enough for a first down. 11 yards the game, pending the outcome of the flag. 
Too many players, Toronto. The penalty's declined. The result of the play is a first down. Too many men. The game stands, first down, Winnipeg. This is what Zach Kolaris did all season long. Escape, get on the edge, get outside of containment, and then his receivers will react. They'll find the hole. The scramble rules are very simple. If you have a deep route, you come back to the ball. That's what Greg Ellingson did. If you have a short route, you go deep. They're the best in the league at doing it, and they have been all year. That was a key first down. Getting inside the 10, so it's a first and goal now. Corey Mace spent so many years with the Calgary Stan Peters as player and coach. in this Grey Cup. The top Canadian of the Grey Cup in 2021 has seven yards to set up a second and goal that much closer to the end zone. Dembski's just going to sit down to the strong side of the formation here and basically curl play action to Brady Oliveira. This is a play designed to work to Dembski's strengths, which is breaking tackles, not this time on Royce Mechie. That's a solid tackle to give his defense another chance to stop to a field goal attempt. But that's a play designed to get it to Dembski because he breaks so many tackles. Neither team has found the end zone yet in this great cup. Best chance yet. Second and goal from the three. Dakota Prukop keeps it. Driving, driving. Can he get to break the plane? He can't. He gets close, but not quite there. And a third well, he's got arguably the best offensive line in the league. He's got the offensive lineman of the 22 Canadian Football League season in Stanley Bryant. I don't think there's any question what he's going to do here on third down. Biggest play of the ball game coming up. Biggest play yet here in the second quarter. A third and goal. And a chance from the one. For the Bombers to take the lead. Pruka. Touchdown. Dakota Pruka. And the Bombers move ahead. Go, go, go. Great push from the right side. Prukop just follows in behind Patrick Newfeld. University of Saskatchewan, up in Saskatoon, right behind big number 53 for the first major of this game. With Caleras on the side watching Prukop, the short yardage specialist, cap off an eight play 70 yard drive. Prukop had six rushing touchdowns in the regular season. And suffice to say, that's the biggest one of his career. to make it a three-point lead. He does. Point after good. And the Bombers are on the board. Veteran and ex-Argo, Dakota Prukop, with the go-ahead touchdown for Winnipeg. Take a look at the scoring drive for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Started with a deep ball, 39-yarder to the leading receiver in the Canadian Football League in the regular season, Dalton Schoen. He got Zach Kolaris out on the edge, working it to Greg Ellingson down the sideline. That led to this. Dakota Prukop with the one-yard quarterback sneak for the major. Eight plays, 70 yards for the Bombers. And how many times have we seen it this season? A drive triggered by that connection from Kolaris and the rookie. That seems odd sometimes calling him a rookie. Dalton Schoen, the way he has played. But getting open, big catch to get him down, and it is capped off. Prukop talking things over with Drew Brown, the backup QB. Just fine, thank you very much. Because Winnipeg has the lead in this 2022 Grey Cup. Now by three, halfway through the second quarter. As Mark Leggio lines it up to kick it off from the 30. Javon Lee. Turned by a leak to get it up to the 47. Dakota Prukop 
They get in close. They give it to 12. He gets it in. Bombers lead. 109th Grey Cup on TSN. Cup starting. The Grey Cup back in Saskatchewan for the fourth time and the first time at this new Mosaic Stadium. The last time back in 2013 when the Riders won at Old Taylor Field. Just a few yards away where it used to be. A.J. Left it running back with the clock, Bethel Thompson. And the Argos trailing for the first time in this Grey Cup. who lifts it up and has a catch. And we remember last week when he had one bobbled off his foot, the replay showed that it counted. That one counts for 13 yards for Speedy B. Yeah, he's made some, some great ones in his career. You mentioned the East Final. He used his feet, his knee, and his arm to get it. It was a key catch then. That was a key catch as well. Throwing again, and Daniels has it. Found some room, and it was threaded in nicely by Bethel Thompson. So back-to-back -back completions for the veteran Argo quarterback. That one, the gain about eight, nine yards. Second and one coming up. What I'm looking for a little bit here, Rod, is how Bethel Thompson and Ryan Dinwiddie, Brandon Banks, get some attention and talk to the training staff. But how Ryan Dinwiddie and, and Bethel Thompson are going to adjust to the pressure package that the Bombers are sending at them. Especially on second down, not second and short, when they get in second and long situation. Chad Kelly, the backup quarterback, coming in in short yardage. Keeps it. Second effort should be enough. Needed a yard to get close to the 40 yard line. Take a look at what happened to Brandon Banks. Fifth great cup start for Banks. Let's take a look. Oh, I didn't even didn't get hit. Non-contact injury. Trying to come out of his break. Looked like his knee just locked. Trying to walk it off down there. He had two catches for 25 yards in the Eastern Final last week in Toronto's win over Montreal. Bethel Thompson throwing again on that first and 10 after Kelly got enough for the first down intended for Daniels again, who was with the Stampeders and played in the 16 and 17 games when they were upset and was not healthy enough to play in the game they won in 2018. Still, of course, getting a ring with the Stampeders as they beat Ottawa four years ago. and arm strength will tell you he can make every throw in the book. He's got a strong arm. This is a wide side out, even with the hash marks moved in. Brandon Banks walked off that knee problem. Big catch for a first down on the sideline. Here's a couple of breakup touchdowns, including one in 2014 thrown by Zach Kolaris with Hamilton. That's to no Argo near, and Dietrich Nichols, Winnipeg was the closest one there as that is overthrown and second down coming up. That was a communication issue. That wide receiver over there on the short side, like they were, could have been a read route. And DeVaris Daniels zigged when Bethel Thompson thought he'd zag. Is that second and long? Does Richie Hall go with blitz here? And Willie Jefferson, ex Saskatchewan Rough Rider. Back in what used to be his home, and trying to get the crowd fired up. With Kyle looking deep, left again into the end zone, but no. Great coverage by Winston Rose, and the intended Argo receiver. Looking at Daniels again, and so third down coming up. Yeah, it looks like they went right back to the same play where they had the communication issue, Ron. This time. Daniels is, is head right down the sideline. Rose in pretty good position. Little push, little pull. Good no call by the officials. And so on comes Boris Beatty again. He made one from 47 going the other way. Barely it was heading left. And then the second try from the same spot here, 36 yards away last time, pushed it. 
it to the right. This is to tie the game. Feeney. And it's breaking right again, but it started left. It's perfect. It's down the middle. And Beatty is two for three. And more importantly for the Argos, we've got a tie game 7-7 late in the second. Earlier today, this morning, the Football Reporters of Canada breakfast annual inductions into the Hall of Fame of that man, Glenn Suter. So deserving. 27 years with us at TSN going back to 1995, shortly after a great playing career with Saskatchewan. Partner, richly deserved for all the great years. You have been really the voice of the CFL on TSN all these years. Congratulations. Well, absolutely love this game. You know that. And absolutely love the rules, the Canadians being featured. And this, I love to represent every one of our crew members. Over 200 crew members working every job equally as important, working in sync, all the cameramen. 52 cameras in this game in the Grey Cup ride. You know that we are a piece of the puzzle, yes, but every job so important and such a great crew. So I'm proud to represent each and every one of them. Oliveira picking up about three yards on that first down. This is the three-minute warning. The three-minute warning comes out. Winnipeg ball. And back and forth they've gone. The Argos had the lead, then the Bombers. Now it's time. Late in the first half of Break Up 109. Robin, Josh Ross. And then Bernas Sanchez, Dunnigan, and Stiegel. Our halftime panel joined also by Paul Laplace and Bo Levi Mitchell. Lots to talk about in this 109th Break Up game. Currently tied at seven. Defenses have been strong. This side, the Argos move the ball down and get it close enough for Boris Beatty again. So back to Zach Kalaris. Last drive was a touchdown drive, including a 39-yard connection to Dalton Schoen. Lots of time here. It's under three minutes. But plenty for the Bombers to work with. And Kevin Bryant is Brady Oliveira. Out of hole. It's a tough yardage, and he doesn't want to give up on it either. He gets five yards and up a little closer to the 50. Defense coordinator for the Argos, Corey Mays, has now got a deal with the balance in the Bomber offense. They are at their best when Brady Oliveira is picking up 7-8 on first down. And then Zach Kolaris can open up the playbook, go play action. The disruptor, Jagera Davis, could help to put an end to that. You want to get to the Grey Cup, get that guy in your team. Exactly. Six years in the CFL, and this is his sixth Grey Cup game. Then he goes to Hamilton, last two years, cup appearances, and now with the Argos, he is back. Now, the downside for Ja'Garrett Davis is there's only one win. Yeah, with 2018 over Ottawa with the Stampeders, and like Brandon Banks, his third straight break up, and all against Winnipeg, two with Hamilton, now one with the Argos. Six years in the league, six times to the cup. That's amazing.
the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, Rod, I'm just talking about this. They don't beat themselves. If you're wondering how a team can get to 15 wins, that doesn't convert and get them a first down that play. But the patience from Zach Kolaris to dump it across the middle on that short crosser, knows he's probably not gonna get the first down, but he's gonna get enough field position out of it to get his punt team out there, get the ball deep, so it gives his defense a chance to keep McLeod Bethel Thompson off the scoreboard before the end of the half. I just, this is a bomber team in all three phases that do not beat themselves. The fifth time in this great cup that Mark Leggio will punt it away, but you're right, 17 yards closer. It's a two, Javon Lake, the punt of 45, and Lake up the near side on that return with 129 to go until halftime. is the wide receiver. That's the bar is down. Going on to the right for Curly Gettins, who slams his hands down in frustration after that drop on first down. Yeah, these little bubble screens to start to get Curly Gettins going are, are just, it looks like he is, he is fighting it a little bit. Great cup here. celebrate doing what he has so often done best just a phenomenal athlete that stands six foot seven 252 pounds and gets in the passing lane athletic McLeod Bethel Thompson told me I gotta watch the guy because he's like a linebacker he's so quick to the ball he'll drop and he'll back the ball down in the air near the 50, still over a minute to go, lots of time for the Bombers. We mentioned the CFL Awards headed out on Thursday night, and there they are, lots of Bombers, Caleros, Stanley Bryant, top line, offensive lineman again, Dalton Schoen, top rookie, and Mike O'Shea, head coach, and Nathan Rohr. Yeah. Even with the injury, what a remarkable season that young man had for the BC Lions. Yeah, just a special talent. It was a real pleasure to watch Nathan Rohr go to work, Canadian quarterback, in all the Canadian passing records. Congratulations to all the award winners. Yeah, Lorenzo Malden as well, top defensive player. The Red Blacks making the handoff, completing the pass. It's in the hands of Nick Dembski again, who has good yardage after the catch for Winnipeg first down. 15-yard gain for the top Canadian in last year's break up. And it's still lots of time in the clock at just over a minute. seems to be fine as he goes on the run. And 
that second down play and picked up seven yards. And an important seven as well in terms of field goal position. And Buck Pierce calling the plays for Zach Kolaris, the offensive coordinator, former star quarterback in the Canadian Football League. Stepped in for Paul LaPolice when he went to Ottawa and has done a tremendous job with Zach Kolaris. Kolaris has got to be careful there when he gets up after that hit because there are concussion spotters that are looking for any type of sign that he may have been a little wobbly. I don't think he was. Goes right to the bench, but that was a pretty big hit on that scramble. So Mark Leggio will come on and try a field goal for the first time in this game. Dakota Prukop will put it down just beyond the 45. He was 32 of 39 in the regular season. Longest of 55. Against a bit of a breeze. Accurate enough. And long enough to give the Bombers the lead again. Leggio nails that field goal in the Grey Cup as Winnipeg goes up 10-7. Ryder Center Dan Clark winning the Jake Gadar Veterans Award. Also Gail Munn from the Riders winning the Jane Bobby Award, recognizing a highly valued yet unsung employee. Former BC Lions president Rick Lollisher received the Hugh Campbell Distinguished Leadership Award. Also Manny Arsenault took home the Tom Payne Award. That is given to the player who displays qualities that distinguish them from their peers. And longtime official Jeff Hartman received the Tom to the lead. Navarez Daniels has that one. 16 seconds on the clock after the field goal. There's Jeff Harvin again. And richly deserved congratulations to him as well. All of the award winners. This clock ticks down to the time. That's completed. Cam Phillips, second catch. He had a big one earlier on in this quarter. The 37 yards. Is that close enough? That's the question now. Morris Beatty would have a little bit of a breeze in his back end. You know, They're going to try it. They're going to try a long one. Now, you recall, we did this game the last time the Argos were here against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the summer. At the end of the half, Morris Beatty tried a 61-yarder. He missed it. And Mario Alford took it out and returned it the length of the field for a touchdown. Well, that's the issue. That's the issue. When you try a long one, these returners is certainly Janarian Grant. If you miss, watch out. He could take it to the house. Now this one is closer. That one was 61. This one about a 53-yarder for Boris Beatty to tie the game before the half. And it is starting left and staying. Out comes Janarian Grant. Starts off to the left. And is taken down Jack Kassar in his second year out of Carleton University with a big tackle there to ensure there's no further damage against the Argos at halftime. Players leaving the field. Interesting first half. Well, first quarter was all defense. Second quarter, the offense has got on track. We've got a football game, and we've got country music coming up at halftime. Well, that's the half. Let's go down to Farhan Lalji with Dalton Schoen. First great cut, just the one catch, but a big one to set up the touchdown. Take us through it and just what it's like out there. It's great out there. You know, I wish we as an offense would have executed a little better throughout the whole half. We put together the one touchdown drive, but, you know, I think at the end of the day, we know we need to be a little bit better. I want to ask you about the play of Zach. Everyone was wondering what his angle would look like. He's running out there seemingly giving everything he's got. We know Zach's going to give all he's got. All of us knew that this whole week. He's a warrior. We knew he was going to battle. He's going to leave it all out there on the field, and we got the most confidence in the world than him. Dalton, thanks for this. Thank you. All right, now let's send it over to the Argo sideline. Here's Claire Hanna with Andrew Harris. Andrew, you've had some nice touches, but all you guys have been able to do is get field goals. How do you find the end zone? I mean, yeah, we got we got to be better on picking up the blitz. Um, the second long situations, um, they're, get, they're getting some pressure on us. But I mean, I feel like our run game is uh, is successful, so we got to get back to doing that. Uh, sustain drives, keep that keep their offense off the field, and um, you know, just just capitalize on the opportunities when we get in the green zone. Not only are you a leader on this team, but you've won the last two Grey Cups. What's your message going to be to your teammates at the half? We're right in this, man, and uh, we haven't played our best football yet. So we're, we're a couple plays away to, to breaking this thing open, and we just got to stick at it. They're a good football team too. They're going to make their play. Uh, we just got to stay together, be a family, and, um, and, and come, on, come on all cylinders in the second half. Thanks, Andrew. Thank you. 
Well, 10 7 game as the defending champs take the lead into the half. Coming up, it's a trio of country music shining stars as they will unite for a one time only collaboration for this year's Twisted Tea Grey Cup halftime show. To go on Matt Dunnigan's comment about that first half, Glenn, surprised the Argos got away from the running game in the second quarter. Yeah, I am. I mean, Andrew Harris had five carries all in the first half, our first quarter, and when you think about his 7.2 average in that first quarter on those five carries, they went away from it. As Bo mentioned, they got into second and long, and Richie all went with some blitz packages that provided the pressure. And so, for Zach Kalar, Six for 10, 95 yards, and a three-point lead coming in. The field goal department, Boris Beattie, two for four, two misses. Mark Leggio made his one try. Now, the Bombers have won the toss. They deferred, so they're going to get the ball in the second half. They'll be against a breeze gusting anywhere from 20 to 30 kilometers an hour tonight. It's minus four, so very pleasant, all things considered here in a late November day at Mosaic Stadium in Regina. Perfect conditions, you'd have to say as Janari and Grant will go back to take it. So Winnipeg will get the ball, having the lead. 30 minutes away, they're hoping from a three-peat. Lots of football left. I'm curious what the Argos do offensively, if there's any change or going back to that running game. In the regular season, these two teams met once. Back in July in Toronto. It was a one-point difference. That's it. Three points now. in that first half of this great cup. Yeah, it took both offenses a quarter to settle in, and then Zach Kolaris goes down the field for 39 yards to Dalton Schoen, made a couple of plays with his legs getting outside the pocket, as our coach, Coach Lapalouse, mentioned at halftime. His ankle looks good. He's running around, he's making plays, and he's making sure he protects the football. Again, this Bomber team will not beat themselves. In the hands of Brady Oliveira. No, it's fake. And Kolaris. Well, he's throwing it for Ellingson on the sideline near the first down marker. Deshaun Avis is there, and it falls incomplete. Second and ten coming up for Winnipeg. Coming off the edge, looks like it's Robbie Smith who's going to provide some pressure there. He's going to read that fake, slide down the line of scrimmage to make sure he takes his gap, and then he redirects and quickly tracks down Zach Kolaris. And Kolaris is two for ten. The Bombers' offense is on second down conversions. Another second down and long now, second and ten. To start the second half in the Winnipeg 32. in the house this time Corey Mace takes a page out of the Richie Hall defensive playbook and says okay we've got a pressure package too Chris Edwards coming from disguise he's way outside here and he's gonna end up coming but so is Enoch Mwamba so overloading the offensive line seven man pressure zero well they dropped linebacker in behind it but good pressure on Kolaris Start in the second half with the Argo defense and a low punt against the breeze by Legio. Lee Cassie inside the bomber 50 with more down the sideline and he is rocked by Brian Cole on that special teams coverage as Leak is slow to get up after an excellent return. The Argos in business on offense to start the second half. Well, it's the all-time leader in special teams tackles out of Acadia, Mike Miller, I believe, who comes over either you right Brian Cole but Mike Miller involved in that cover team and they've been great again all three phases all season long and this is the best field position to begin a drive for the Argos in this great cup at the 35 of Winnipeg for McLeod Bethel Thompson 10 for 21 for 142 in the first half back to Andrew Harris yeah 
hands. Yeah, they get his hands. Yeah, they, they, they saw what we saw, and they saw what Matt Dunnigan saw, and Ryan didn't when he's going back to establish it to start the second half. This was Andrew Harris in his first five carries. This was all in the first quarter. He had 36 yards, an average of 7.2 per carry, and the Argos were gaining some traction as that was going on. They did not give it to Andrew Harris in the second quarter. Thompson to throw his receiver open. Winston Rose is in a great position here. Inside shoulder and just throws him open. Throws it to that outside because he sees Rose hanging on the inside edge and he throws it to the outside shoulder to DeVaris Den. Throw him open. Four catches his best breakup. 2017 he had 11 for 113 yards in Ottawa. At the Winnipeg 18. same play. They get them both on, on the field at the same time. This time the fake to Olet and getting it out in the passing game to Andrew Harris. They spot the ball out of the four. A first and goal. Deep as the Argos have gone in this great cup. Settling at this point just for field goal tries. This is a different field for the double blue. A.J. Olet. 3-2-1. Touchdown Argos. They saw what we saw. Adjustments are everything in this game, and clearly Ryan Dinwiddie went in at halftime. He talks to McLeod Bethel Thompson. I'm almost certain Andrew Harris went over and just dropped a couple of hints in that halftime break to say, hey, let's go back to the run game. Let's go back. We had success in the first quarter. Get the run game. Get your backs out there. Big drive for Toronto to start the second half. AJ his first great cup touchdown. And Forrest Beattie will try the point after 32 yards out to make it a four point Argo lead. They're back in front. They're back in front by four. Well, that second half started about as well as it could for Toronto. Defensively and then on offense. AJ Olette with a great cup touchdown. Toronto Argonauts open up with a big defensive stop and great field position. That sets up a four-play, 35-yard drive, but the key to it for the Argos is the balance in it. Two passes, two key runs, two plays, key plays, where both A.J. Olette and Andrew Harris were on the field at the same time, and Olette finds the end zone. Harris got a couple of touches, running the ball again, and then that big reception to get him down to first and goal, and then cashed in by that product of the Ohio University Bobcats, A.J. Olet. It's a gym called No Name, making a name for himself this night, this season, in the backfield of the Argos, who now lead the great cup by four. Janarian Grant. Runs out of space up around. that is still struggling despite the one touchdown drive they had to find the kind of production that they've been used to this season. Yeah, I, and I think that, you know, that Buck Pierce probably looked at that first half and, and may go back to Brady Oliveira. I mean, eight, eight carries. He also had 36 yards in the first half. And that opened, it up, opened up some deeper throws against his own defense. He shot the gap here. Enoch Mwamba, watch how he will shoot the gap, play the play. He knows, too, that when 
Winnipeg wants to go back to the draw for it, get the run game going, and he just plays the play and steps up on Nick Dembski and makes the tackle in the backfield. That's a loss of a yard for Dembski. Wamba in his rookie year with Winnipeg. Their top pick in 2011 went to the Grey Cup, losing to the BC Lions. Thought he'd be back every year. Finally back now. Big tackle, second and long. Polaris. The Heat's coming again. They nearly get him. He gets away. Throws it to an open receiver. He's got back and show. Another big catch for the CFL's top rookie in a gain of 26 yards up to the Winnipeg 50. This is the Zach Kolaris magic. This is what he has done all season to break down a defense. He should have been sacked for about a seven or eight yard loss. Missed him there. They missed him again. He gets out and around the edge and he throws with accuracy on the run better than any quarterback in the league. All due respect to all the good ones and there's a lot of them, but man, he's dangerous when he gets outside. Great cup for Drew Wolitarski. He was there in 19 and 21 as well. Eight of eight. Takes away a little of that Argo momentum. That big play by Zach Kolaris to get outside and, and move the chains. The Argos, you can see the jump in their step after the touchdown on the teams and on defense. Kolaros play took a little wind out of that set. A little juice going in this game now, though. Offense is second and short now. Here's the alignment in on that running play by Brady Oliveira, who does have enough to pick up the first down. A gain of three for Oliveira. Across midfield, the Bombers have gone, looking to respond after the Argos found the end zone. You know, when you look at a 15-win season, franchise record you, you think that this was a, a dominating team but but they were into the final three minutes in a lot of their wins this season and they found different ways to get it done Move. from the Argo 49 first and 10 oh, oh, nearly intercepted <laughs> off the hands of Enoch Mwamba nearly had a great cup pick but it falls incomplete and a second down and 10 is coming up boy he does a nice job of disguising where he's dropping here Enoch Mwamba is going to trail off like this like he's playing man to man on a crossing row you'll see that the bomber cross in front of his face but he keeps climbing for depth going back into that curl road instead of jumping up shallow and he gets right in the throwing lane and the only thing he forgot was the football you know? Sort out. Sort out Offside, Toronto, number 40. Five-yard penalty, repeat, second down. The end, Robbie Smith, third-year veteran out of Wilfrid Laurier, is called on the offside. So second down, repeated, it'll be a second and five. Yeah, he just jumped in snap count. And... Got caught in the neutral zone, a yard between the line of scrimmage. And Robbie Smith out of Wilfred Laurier. And is it just me, Rod, or am I seeing more and more players in the Canadian Football League that come out of Wilfred Laurier? The Golden Hawks program doing a great job. On this team alone, currently getting Sam Achenbaum, also from the Golden Hawks program. You're right. Quite a few. Second and five. Approaching the 35, Bombers on the move after a gain of seven. One of the reasons that the Bombers are trying to repeat and have won two in a row is their great team chemistry. They have the tremendous culture that's been created by their players, as Michael Shea will say, but been facilitated by the coaching staff and management. When they get in tough situations, they battle back, they keep their calm, and that's what they're doing on this drive. See Stanley Bryant, the top offensive lineman in the CFL again. Liam Dobson comes in. They have six old linemen now running this package on a first and ten at the Argo 37. And they do run across inside for Oliveira, or Nick Dembski, excuse me, as he picks up a 
few yards down to the 35. It looked like the the action on that fake and and interesting looking play deep in the playbook for Buck Pierce almost happened too fast. And Buck Pierce reached deep in there and if it was a little more slower developing it would have influenced the defense to move first to Brady Oliveira and maybe get out of their gap responsibilities. But it happened so fast that they were still sitting in their gaps. So Dembski picks up two. It's a second and eight. It's a big bomber drive after they've fallen behind in this game again but they're in our territory. Inside the 35. Shown. A popular target all year, a popular, popular, popular target, excuse me, tonight with his third catch and another one to move the sticks. Got a drive going now. They're getting Dalton shown on this out route and shown, as you mentioned, number one target when Zach Kolaris gets something going. He's looking for number 83, finds him on the sideline. He throws from deep in the pocket there and he puts it right on the money. He's popular. That's my point. <laughs> he has been. And why not? The way he's played this year in his first in the CFL. Handing off. Oliver. Press attack on the side. Still going for the Oliver. Great run by the bomber running back to get it down. Approaching the 10. A gain of 10 yards. Just bobbing and weaving. Great vision from Brady Oliver. And if you need another reason to cheer for this young superstar tailback who's just 24 years old, how about this? He saves puppies in the offseason. Over 400 puppies he saves and finds good homes. If you need another reason, there you go. How can you not like a guy like that? And, and Brady, he's going to make that his life's work, by the way. He has said a lot about that. Dakota Prukop in. It's a first down. Around the 11. Toronto. Prukop keeps as a touchdown. Winnipeg's TD in short yardage, and that one he keeps it and gets a pickup of four. Just an outstanding bounce back drive, though, for the Bombers that you know, they give up the touchdown. They get it. The Argos get the defensive stop. Real good field position. The four play touchdown drive. Bombers with the response right here. Gain of four, second and six. It hit McFadden in the back, but it looks like he is the subject of this penalty. Well, the play's made because of the patience from Zach Kolaris and, and to make sure that defensive pass interference, Toronto, number 20. Ball will be placed on the one-yard line, first down Winnipeg. He, he buys some time, so then it becomes change of direction for Wolitarski, who is trying to fight for the ball, and there's a couple of examples of pass interference there. I think there was contact beyond five yards. Probably could have been called for screening. Correct call by the official. Dakota Krukop again. Looking for touchdown number two. And he's got it. Krukop and the Bombers find the end zone a second time and retake the lead. And that's what championship teams do. That's what 15 win teams do. The opposition gets paid and they can make their plays, but it's what you do the next series. And Zach Kolaris puts a drive together, marches it down the field. One offside mistake by the Argo defense. Bombers find the end zone. Behind the big boys up front inside, Bray, Couture, Newfell. We got Stanley Bryant, Demarcus Hardrick, too, in that great experienced offensive line working ahead. Mark Leggio looks for another point after try after a short yardage touchdown by Dakota Pruka, who played for the Argonauts from 2017 to 2019. Big Stanley Bryant went back there to congratulate Dakota Prukop. Just I, I don't know if he was congratulating him or 
going up there to say, uh, just follow behind me and, and we'll be fine. We'll lead the way. Winnipeg goal line did. Royce Mechie. Injured Argo and getting some attention now. Coming up, the World Juniors on TSN. Canada's favorite holiday tradition gets underway. Boxing Day, the tournament returns to Canadian ice. You can catch every game live from Halifax and Moncton. The World Juniors live on TSN. So with Mechie off the field, they could go to the point after trying now. Winnipeg leading this Grey Cup again. It's a night Dakota Prukop won't forget. Not a lot of yardage, but a lot of points with two rushing touchdowns. Winnipeg in front. And an Argo touchdown. How would they respond? Well, as you'd expect them to respond. Starting this drive with a little Polaris magic as he escapes the pocket, makes a big play for a first down. And yeah, they respond. They don't flinch. When bad things happen to them, they rushed off the touchdown. The Argos take the lead. They go 13 plays, 85 yards over seven minutes with a huge response and retake the lead. So now, how do the Argos respond to that? Leggio with the kick. Javon Lake with the return. Up across the 30. And it's close to the 40. So good place for Andrew Harris, McLeod Bethel Thompson in that Toronto offense to begin again. Broadcast to the memory of cameraman Jim Young, who recently passed away after a long battle with cancer. Jim worked on many sports for TSN, but football and the Great Cup was always special to him. Known to all of us as Gyraf, his dedication and passion brought some of the most iconic images in Canadian sport through his lens, survived by his wife Judy. He was 60 years of age. He loved this event. Low end zone camera, best in the business. Jim Young. Argo football down again by three after the Winnipeg touchdown in the hands of Andrew Harris. Pulls his way up across the 45. So we saw more of Harris to start the second half, and AJ Olet as well. So in that first, yeah, so in that first half, Willie Jefferson and Jackson Jeffco about one in every three plays, they move them into the inside position, defensive tackle. But if they're going to move them, that's where they can get some real mismatches on pass rush. But if they keep running the ball, they can try to neutralize their strong end. Now Winnipeg knows what he's capable of doing in a game. But it's second down, and Bethel Thompson does get it away. First down. Well, it was might have been a late hit by the Argos. It was Ryan Hunter possibly that was cruising. It looked like the tackle was clean. Let's see what this call is. Willie Jefferson took off to get over After the play. Fault. Player misconduct foul. Toronto number 62. 15 yard penalty, it'll be third down. Look at 62, the bottom of your screen, and he's just cruising, and then he sees the back of Willie Jefferson and gives him a shot after the whistle. So now Ryan Hunter with the new rule cannot get a, another one of those penalties or he'll have to leave the football game. It was going to be third down anyway, but now the Argos are forced. 15 further back to the 31 and back further than that is John Haggerty to punt this one away to Janarian Frank. So that one penalty swings the field and one pegs away as Frank backtracks the after a 44 yard punt and does manage to get it up to the Winnipeg 40 on that return overall. Good coverage once again. 
by the punt coverage team of the Toronto Argonauts. In Grey Cup 109, 17 for going to the Grey Cups is used to a lot of support from family. Let's go back to Claire Hanna with that story. Yeah, and Jagger Davis is the first player since 1983 to make six consecutive appearances at the Grey Cup, and it's a game he said he's never taken for granted. This is one he knows players have fought for their whole career. Sometimes they never make it here. And he says he treats it like any other game, but there is one pregame ritual that he has every Grey Cup, and that is a text from his mom, Gayla Davis. Now, she's made it to four of the last ones. She couldn't make it here today because of flight issues, but he is thinking about her during this game because she said, be you, be great, and play like if I was there cheering you on in the stands, guys. And Claire, when the day comes, inevitably, some year it will, when he's not in the Grey Cup, it's going to feel strange. Uh, maybe not. 89 games for Jagera Davis. 49 sacks in his career. Outstanding play. Bomber football in the 40. Faking the handoff, throwing it out to Greg Ellingson, who has it for a gain of about five yards, Winnipeg. Second down. Jagger Davis flash there and forced the quick throw from Kolaris. He's a disruptor at the level of Jackson Jeffcoat and Willie Jefferson. You know, defensive ends throughout the history of this great league, and this is 109, remember. Defensive ends can take over a game by themselves. We've seen them drop back into coverage before. Cover running back. I think that with a snap of the ball. Jagera Davis lining up over Jamarcus Hardrick just got him out of his out Procedure. of his stance. Winnipeg number 51 five yard penalty remains second down great right tackle veteran Jamarcus Hardrick by the way the first penalty taken by the Bombers in this great cup yeah and there's Jagera Davis lining up across from Jamarcus Hardrick or, or Hardrick and see that early movement Davis is quick to point out second down Sean Oakman inside. Enoch Mwamba. Some pressure from that Toronto defense to force the Bombers to kick it away. That's what I mean about the matchup against Winnipeg, that the Argos are equipped up front because of the size of their interior D linemen. They, they get a good push up the middle. Sean Oakman is 290 pounds. Great against the run, but you run a stunt like that, he can get to the quarterback, too. Leggio with the punt. It rolls out of bounds at the Argo 43. Mike O'Shea, talk about the bomber repeat. And how about his legacy as well? Great Cup champions to three beats since 1925. Well, Edmonton doing it twice, once in the modern day history of the CFL, and the Argos going back before the formation of the CFL from 1945 to 47, but uncommon, remarkable, and Winnipeg has a chance to do it tonight. Well, and Zach Polaris, if he can get it done, the only other quarterback is Warren Moon. In the corner, 43, thinking to Harris. Daniels bobbled it, but he does catch it. Put it up around the 50 on that first down play, and about the second and three coming up. One possession game again in the Canadian Football League. We've had over 60% in the regular season. One possession games decided in the final three minutes. The Bombers won all of their one possession down to the final three minute games this year. Led by that man who could, if he three peaks, get to the Warren Moon status. This will be the last play of the third quarter. It's a second and short. About two yards needed. And no, yeah, sir. That was Andrew Harris, and Shut he down. was stuck. And a third and short is coming up to start the fourth quarter. Casey Sales, defensive tackle. Up big for that Winnipeg defense. Well, the Argos showing a lot of life in that third quarter, but Winnipeg came back. They retook their lead. They have a three-point edge with 15 minutes to go.
through three quarters of Grey Cup 109 it is close the Bombers lead it by a field goal and maybe the biggest story in the previous 15 minutes Glenn is how Winnipeg and we've seen it so many times responded after the Argos took the initiative and took the lead with a touchdown. Yeah you just mentioned that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with just one penalty that just happened recently here so this is what I mean about Winnipeg and they're a three phase team that stick together even when they go down in the scoreboard now you've got to think that maybe the Argos are going to need to create one of those turnovers they created more than any team in the league in the regular season they may need to create another one and we got a football game going into the fourth we do and it's in the hands look out there Special teams coaches looking out on the field, shaking their head, thinking, how do we stop this guy? He just needs a tiny little seam, and he will hit it, and now he outruns the angles. Good God. 102-yard punt return touchdown. Of the Stampeders returned one 97 yards in the 2018 Grey Cup against Ottawa. And this one even further for Janarian Grant. Been such an electric player, and what a way for Winnipeg to start the final 15 minutes of this Grey Cup. The point after from Legio, and no, he misses it left. Legio missed two extra points in the Western Final last week against BC. So that one, it's still a two-score game. It's 23-14 with Winnipeg leading it by nine. So how does he get these scenes? How does Janarian Grant make oh, these no. plays time after time? Well, it's athletic ability and speed, but watch Robbie Smith here. His lane is supposed to be right there. You got a guy there. You got a man here. You got another contained man. Robbie Smith gets pushed a little bit out of his lane, and that's all that Janarian Grant needs. Now he's got open field, and the speed element kicks in, and he puts it in another gear right here. Now all the angles are broken, and when I say angles, you're trying to cut a runner off by going deeper than where he's at, and he outruns those angles with tremendous speed. That is the fourth punt return touchdown for Janarian. Grant, that's Mickey Donovan, by the way, the special teams coordinator for the Argos, and that look says it all, and that look says it all as well from a guy who used to be a special teams coordinator in Michael O'Shea. But saying about Grant, four punt return touchdowns this year, two in the regular season, we and have, two in the playoffs, we tonight, have, and last week in the West Final. We have. They are a three-phase team. Have. Let's go. All three phases it ain't over. contribute. It ain't a sense of urgency for Macbeth, McLeod Bethel Thompson. Javon Lee on the return. He gets up shy of the 40, mentioning last week a game breaker against the BC Lions in the Western Final. Yeah, just one of the great aspects of Canadian football. The special teams are one third of the game and they can change a game on a dime. This was the West Final, another big return. And right after that return, the Bombers went into the run game on offense and grinded it down. But that was the big play that turned it. In his third year out of Rutgers, and he was electric from the moment he arrived in the CFL in 2019. He wants a third straight ring. He certainly helped his color a couple times out with a hand in his face and launches it looking for Brandon Banks. Desmond Lawrence was there every step of the way as it falls incomplete. Yeah, I think Brandon Banks got inside on that deep route and and on the on the throw it looked like Bethel Thompson was trying to throw it outside. Watch how he goes up the field. He's working one on one and see that little move. Now see that cut back to the inside. I think that fooled McLeod Bethel Thompson. They're on the different page there. He thought that Brandon Banks was going to stay outside and guess who was right in his kitchen again? Jeffco. Jackson Jeffco the one applying the heat. Second and ten. Caught by Cam Phillips 
and a flag has come out back in the Argo backfield. Well, if this play stands, it may be the biggest for the Argos. Major foul, roughing the passer. Yep. 95 Winnipeg. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. They'll, they will tack that on. That's Jake Thomas. Jake Thomas is going to get the late hit, but this is a monster play with all the momentum on the Bombers' side right now. McLeod Bethel Thompson absolutely had to get at least a couple of first downs to try and slow the momentum, and this hit is going to tack on 15. 26 yard catch plus the 15, and a gain of 41 to the Winnipeg 30. First and 10 to run. against that Blue Bomber defense and the tackle Casey Sales, who stops it. Old teammates, by the way, with the Ohio Bobcats, Sales and Olet. They know each other. Teammates of Nathan Rourke as well. Olet was at Ohio. Richie Hall, Winnipeg defensive coordinator. It's a second and long after the job Sales did, stopping that run. And the receiver yeah. was Brandon Banks. And once again, covered by Des Lawrence. It goes too far. And Banks, frustrated, heads to the sideline. Yeah, forget about the not on the same page. I, uh, right now, Brandon Banks and, and McLeod Bethel Thompson are reading from a completely different book. I mean, frustration from Banks. But I think Bethel Thompson threw that. He was delivered on that throw. It looks like he was throwing it right where he wanted to throw it. And Banks again, nowhere near. This is the third attempt of the night for Boris Beattie from 36 yards. He made one, he missed one. He's two for four overall in field goal tries in this great cup game. Put down by Haggerty, and it breaks left again, but easily good as he goes three for five. And an important three points on the board, at least for the Argos. Still trailing, fourth quarter, great cup 109. Back at Mosaic and Regina and back to a one score game after a 36 yard field goal by Boris Beatty. Winnipeg leads. The lead is down to six for Zach Caleros. Trying to close in on a third straight Grey Cup victory for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers in a place in history. Jagarrett Davis thinks otherwise. The first and ten of the Winnipeg Four. Marcus Hardrick, Patrick Newfeld, they're just getting it done. Right over here on the right side of the offensive line on this play. Yeah, great vision by Brady Oliveira. He's going to step up. He sees the collapse of this side of the defense for Winnipeg Blue Bombers just washing it down, and he makes that jump cut and bounces to the outside. Dakota Prukop is in on a first and ten, so it's not just short yardage. Substitutions at quarterback. The Bombers do this again, making it to Dembski. That changing your quarterback when he's on a bit of a roll always has a downside or can have a downside. He comes off the bench, he's not as warm. This ball is thrown a little bit underthrown down the field to Rush Rasheed Bailey, and what a great catch by Shaq Richardson. I mean, that is a heck of a catch going up and pulling it down. That's high point in the ball. And it's not his first great cup either. He was with the Stampeders in 2017 when they were upset by the Argonauts in Ottawa. So a big pick for the Argos and Richardson as they'll start at their 20. Andrew Harris in the backfield, thinking to him. And that one is complete. Chad Kelly was 
Jones to run them through that. So we saw a quarterback change as well for Toronto with Kelly in. His first taste of breakup action now, and that pass for a first down. Well, Kelly can run, so when he goes play action here at Andrew Harris, he's pressing the edge, and he pulls Adam Big Hill to the line of scrimmage. Kelly to throw again to the right. Perfectly placed for a catch by Marky Bells. How about that? And another first down, and excuse me, Kelly did have a taste of action as a runner in the first half, but he's out slinging it right now. Couple of completions. He looks sharp coming off the bench. Had time to warm up over the last drive. Finished his college ball at Ole Miss. Throwing again and knocked down and who knows, might have been picked by Big Willie Jefferson, but right to him and batted that one down. So a second down coming up as Willie celebrates. When Willie Jefferson moves inside, when he's not the outside player at defensive end, he is in the throwing line lane for hot throws. And that's what Chad Kelly tries to do here. And he's lucky that got knocked down. Because if it's not knocked down by Willie Jefferson, Chad Kelly is throwing an interception to Dietrich Nichols, who cut underneath that quick throw. We've seen Jefferson intercept passes too. He had one against Hamilton way back early in the season that he took in for a touchdown. But that one setting up a second and ten and an injured player for the Blue Bombers. That is Jackson Jeffco getting attention now. Another great defensive end for Winnipeg. We'll be back in Regina. Break up 109. Kelly, well, here's the reason why. Go back to that series before Kelly came out, and that was the follow-through by McLeod Bethel Thompson when Jackson Jeffcoat got the pass rush on him. They were taping his thumb on his throwing hand. He was trying to see if he could grip the football correctly. It was bothering him a little bit. We may see more of Chad Kelly. Kelly, who's the nephew, by the way, of Hall of Famer Jim Kelly, who led the Buffalo Bills to four straight Super Bowl appearances. Looks like Jackson Jeffcoat will be okay on that long event. And Kelly is still in. But it is not enough for a first down, a pickup of five yards, third down coming up for Toronto. No, it wasn't enough for first down, but it was the right decision and read by Chad Kelly. He, he saw that blitz that was giving McLeod Bethel Thompson some issues in the first quarter, and he got the ball out of his hands quickly. Now he can deepen that hot route, but it was the right read. John Haggerty to put it away. Flags coming out. Remember what Janarian Brand did before. Now this time he takes a knee and just gives up the single. Earlier had a 102 yard punt return touchdown that opened this game up. Holding Toronto number 40. 10 yard penalty. Repeat third down. So instead of giving up the point, holding against the Argos and Robbie Smith, they'll make them punt it again further back. The issue for the Argos that they have right now is that their cover team has just run 60 yards and what I often refer to as a barroom ball brawl for for 60 yards and now they're breathing hard and they have to come back and do it all over again with Janarian Grant back there. We saw what he can do. We've seen it so much. And now in this year with four punt return touchdowns and a kickoff return TD. for just a few more yards but they thanks to the penalty didn't have to give up a point a better place to start to closer to the 25 for Zach Caleros quarterbacks to win back to back Grey Cups talk about an exclusive list the great Kenny Plain with Winnipeg in the early 60s Russ Jackson the legend with Ottawa in the late 60s Tom Wilkinson and Warren Moon part of the five straight Wilkie with the first two Warren Moon the next three Doug Flutie with the Argos and Anthony Calvillo 
with the Alex. That's not a bad list. And now you got Zach Kolaris, too, with two, looking for three. Yeah, he's looking for a third. And you see at the left hand side of that screen, only Warren Moon has got there. He's got 8.56 to get it done. Only one quarterback in the history of the CFL winning three straight. Kolaris to join him tonight. Randy Oliveira to help him as he grinds it up to the 30 again, a six on that first down run. And this is often the point in the game where this is exactly what the Bombers will do. They'll try to grind the clock. They're going to go to Brady Oliveira, and they're going to rely on their offensive line to just be road graders and establish and just keep pushing the line of scrimmage. Now, the Argos are well equipped, and they know that too. And those big guys up front. So what do they do in a second and four now? Oliveira in there. Has it again. Pushing, pushing after contact. And he does have enough, it would appear, to get a first down. Grinding it out indeed with another five. And they'll keep doing it. Don't be surprised if Buck Pierce just calls another one. Now, they, you can get creative in the running game. It doesn't have to be, you know, in the A or B gap every single run. This is A gap. That's between the center and the guard on either side. B gap is between guard and tackle either side. And we'll see several times see Liam Dobson, extra offensive lineman in. So Heavy they have set. six of them. Yep. Heavy set. Out comes Greg Ellingson in the substitution. So more of a running formation on this first and ten, of course, at the Winnipeg 35. Content to keep it on the ground. Oliveira turns around, but he still manages to fall back for three yards and make it a second and seven with that clock ticking down towards the seven-minute mark. Yeah, I think that's Jonathan Jones that made the tackle there, and that's what Corey Mace, the defense coordinator, needed to get Zach Kolaris in a second and seven or eight. Now, they still have run the ball in this situation, the Bombers, but it's a it's conventional wisdom that says it's a passing down. The slot back, Greg Ellingson, back in the game on a second and seven. Passing situation, Winnipeg. 6.40 in the clock in the fourth quarter. Pressure coming, gets it away, intended for Nick Dembski. And the closest to it was Jack Richardson as it falls incomplete. And Mark Leggio will be coming back on to punt. So far it's been a quiet night for Nick Dembski. Only targeted three times before that throw. And I think Zach Kolaris felt the pressure and just let it go to that open area. but. Javon Leaf is back. Bombers have had a big return. They lead in the special teams department. Leaf would love to get one and help his team out here. After a punt for Miss Allen, skips over a tackle. He gets him away. Javon Leaf scored down the sideline and pushed out by the last one who could. Didn't get the touchdown, but gets the biggest return for the Argos when they needed it. As Chad Kelly gets set to come on again and lead this offense. Javon Leak. Toronto gets a spark. They're behind by six. Lineman Benoit Marion from the University of Montreal. Leak gets outside. Now watch this block as he comes down. One guy can catch him. It's right there at the point of attack. He's coming to the sideline. There's the angle. And there's the cutoff block to get him around the corner. Well executed on Tanner Ted Walliter by Marion. To get it down to the Winnipeg 31. Chad Kelly still in the quarterback for McLeod Bethel Thompson. He looks deep to the end zone. His receiver fell and wants a call as well. It's Cam Phillips. You know that Ryan Dinwiddie is going to be looking at it. There is a flag. It came out late. So right here is the intended target working one-on-one -on, -one on Jamel Parker. Little outside fake down the seam. Play risk conduct foul. Objectional conduct. Toronto number 16. That's a 10-yard penalty. And Brandon Banks went and said something to the official.
Sent it to the field judge, Brian Krupala. And the flag came out and a costly one. Toronto is challenging that there was defensive pass interference against their receiver, number 16. We'll review the play. Well, first of all, terrible decision by Brandon Banks. There's no, there's no way to sugarcoat that. And, you know, when your team is battling in a one possession game, discipline, so important. A lack of it will cost you and the spotlight will find you if you're a player that does that. So Ryan Dinwiddie is challenged. This is the first challenge that we have seen in a Grey Cup game since the last time the Argos were in one in 2017 when they played Calgary. Nothing changes as far as the penalty goes to Banks, but they're seeing if they can get the P.I. call. Yeah, the challenge out there. I was wondering if Ryan Dinwiddie was going to take a look and try and challenge this. You know, when I saw the first replay, it, it felt a little bit or looked a little bit like he went down on his own, but Jamal Parker gets turned. He, he's he's right at the top of your screen. The, the question is, does he trip? Is he pushed down? sure Jamal Parker he, he got his left hand that he reaches behind but it doesn't look like he really pushes through it tough to tell there that there was no pass interference there was no pass interference call on the field so they'll have to have conclusive evidence to overturn it and, and they had said number 16, but meaning number 89, Cam Phillips. Maybe the this receiver. Maybe this low angle here, Rod. I think he just ran into him. Ran into him. The, the arm. The left arm was trailing, but I don't think he pushed him. Penalties against Brandon Banks. Is it pi against Winnipeg near the end zone? They've had a look. Here's their call. After review. The ruling on the field stands. Incomplete pass. It will be second down. So it stands, and with the penalty against Banks, it goes back to the Winnipeg 41. And a second down and 20. Penalty against Banks. Ryan Dinwiddie now loses his challenge and his timeout in a one-possession game. Just under six minutes. 5.52 and counting. Finger-pointing time as Willie Jefferson crossed the line of scrimmage. And Darius Bladick is trying to assure him that it's his fault. Well, both teams have to understand that the pointing doesn't ever matter. <laughs> but they keep doing it as if it does. Yeah. What was the funny thing about this? Trying to help out the folks who tries. Winnipeg, number five. Five yard penalty remains second down. Now, Darius Bladick might think he did help. Because he <laughs> yeah. was right. Yeah. Bladick and Dijon Allen there, 59, the right tackle, right side of that Argo line. We're at a critical point now. It's a six-point lead for the Bombers. The Argos in Bomber territory down to the 36 in the second and 15. Jack Kelly. Ricky Walker chasing him down. Kelly gets away. Tries to take off, and he does. Kelly's still going. Oh, he takes a hit from Des Lawrence, but he gets right back up again, and a big first down. To the 15 of Winnipeg, Chad Kelly picks up 20 yards. Boy, this kind of situation is exactly what the backup quarterback loves to be in because he has a chance to create and start his own journey. Get teams looking at him, get the Argos looking at him. This is a great run in a crucial time after a penalty to come back and get to a first down. The first down marker, big play by Chad Kelly. Rookie in the CFL. It was a touchdown earlier in this great cup and picks up a few yards on first down. Kelly in for McLeod Bethel Thompson. We saw that hand injury earlier in the quarter. He's trying to keep it warm now in the hand warmer around his waist. Doesn't have it taped up like it was earlier. Going to let Chad Kelly try and finish this drive. Thank you. 
13. Second and seven. Counting down. Close to four minutes left in the fourth quarter. Kelly. Completed. Down near the five. Tavares Daniels. He'll get forward progress. I think he's close. He got eight yards. Now uh, that's a first down. A first down and goal for the Toronto Argonauts. Remember when Chad Kelly faced the blitz, but he made the right read and they had the punt. Didn't get enough. There was the adjustment. Toronto's a point after away from taking the lead. And how about the drive from Chad Kelly in that big play to avoid the rush and get him down in scoring position. Olette off the right side. Nice jump cut. Nice bounce to get outside of that containment from Jamal Parker who tried to step up and run support. But Olette gets there. His second on the night. And what a drive by Chad Kelly coming off the bench. Forrest Beatty missed an extra point that would have forced overtime against Winnipeg back in July. He nails that one. And that one has put the Argos in front. 24-23. Three minutes, 24 seconds left in the fourth quarter. Let's take another look here at this great vision and bounce. I mean, when you when you see A.J. Olette, you think big, strong fullback that'd be real good at blocking, but not as quick as feet as a tailback, but he's got it all. I mean, he's got breakaway speed. We saw that in the Eastern Final. Great vision. Took over for Andrew Harris, as you mentioned. And, boy, that, that's the second of the night, and a big one gives the Argos the lead. It allowed them to keep running the football after Andrew Harris went out mid-August with that torn pack. A.J. Olette, and when Harris comes back, there's enough football for both of them. We saw that last week in the Eastern Final. We're seeing it again tonight. Two touchdowns for that man. Here it comes. What a prized piece of silverware in Canadian history that is with the Mountie Escort. Great Cup tradition as we are getting close. But the game is close to anybody's guess at this point in time who's going to get the hoist. 109 times. It's made its journey down to field level. Janarian Grant. Slips. And down he goes. Winnipeg ball, Winnipeg behind. And we ask that question again. How do they respond? They've responded well so many times, including in this game. Yes, that piece of hardware has changed over the years, but it was Earl Grey, Governor General of Canada, donating it and first handing it out after the champions of 1909. An amateur trophy then, a professional one now, the formation of the CFL officially in 1958, but just think of the stories it could tell. We got one brewing right now here at Mosaic Stadium. sideline when they went out for that last drive there wasn't a lot of raw raw thinking they could get it done then after the interception Mike O'Shea didn't react much didn't show much disappointment same with Zach Calero she came back looked at the iPad and they want to be ready to go here they're not panicking they think there's still time left to get this done a 
under three minutes to go 254 on the stadium clock here at Mosaic. Another look at that interception. Yeah, I think this fool Zach Kolaris, which you don't see very often. Wamba sort of started dropping one way and then reversed his field and got underneath that one. fourth quarter well they're in field goal range and so that's also part of the process here for Ryan Dinwiddie in the play call He's got Chad Kelly that's exactly what I want to do and second down and medium they're going to try and run the ball if they don't get it they're in field goal range and a huge second down for the Winnipeg defense and without Jackson Jeffco he is injured he is on the bench second down for the Winnipeg 37 again to Harris. They will not get the first down. It looks like the field goal unit would be coming out. Still several yards shy. Timeout. Winnipeg. The Winnipeg timeout. As you look at that score, if Toronto can get a field goal and make it a four-point game, the Blue Bombers would be forced to drive for a touchdown. Yeah, still, one, still a one-possession game. But now they need the major. Obviously. Now there's plenty of time for Zach Kolaris, and that's why Coach O'Shea called the timeout. I mentioned that earlier game, which ended 23-22 Winnipeg, on a missed extra point that would have likely forced overtime. So these teams have played it close before. Razor close right now. It was back in July the 4th. The only other time they met this year. Looks like the Argos are not going to try and kick the field goal here to take a four-point lead. This is incredible. It's a third and two. Well, they just try to draw them offside. Yeah, that could be too. Kill more time. The clock, excuse me, sitting at 2.09. And yeah, now they can't get the penalty, so. Yeah, Coach O'Shea called the timeout. And the reason. Timeout. Toronto the reason he did that was for that exact reason that even if they wanted to come out and try and draw them offside deliberately they're not working the clock at the same time it doesn't start until the snap of the ball so good decision to call the timeout there from coach O'Shea and now Ryan Dinwiddie will put the field goal team out there 209 on the clock one point Argo lead Boris Beattie comes on he is three for five his two misses one was much further at 52 at the end of the half, but he has missed a 36 yarder. There's been some movement on his kicks, too. All night. But he has made three of those five as mentioned. This is the biggest one to make it a four point lead.
let's put the spotlight on maybe the biggest play of the season for the Toronto Argonauts. And on Robbie Smith off the edge, up the field. He doesn't get blocked. Jamarcus Hardrick decides to take the inside man who really wasn't rushing. Fourth sack of the night, Argos. Polaros, third down. Running around. Is that a face mask? What a break this would be for Winnipeg. On third down and 13. Major foul, face mask, Toronto number 40. 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. Now there's no question about the penalty call. Right hand in the corner of the face mask. Zach Kolaris knew it immediately, looked at the official, the flag was out. They get a new set of downs and new life. Instead of a sack to force a turnover on downs and take over and put it away, Winnipeg has new life up at their 41. 126 to go. What a finish. Break up 109. seconds on the clock. Let's see the penalty here. No yards. Winnipeg number five. It's a five yard penalty. First down Toronto. Two huge field goal tries. One per team blocked at a critical moment of this great cup. First by the Bombers and now by the Argos to prevent Winnipeg from taking back the lead. Ron, I think it was Robbie Smith right up the middle. It looks like to me this is a tough angle to see his number, but right up the middle down Main Street, number 40, Robbie Smith gets his hands. He got the face mask call and he blocks the kick. How's that for redemption after the face mask call you talked about? As they can sense a victory now. With but 40 seconds left. 
It's about the next play. Everybody makes a mistake. What do you do on the very next play? Robbie Smith flushed the mistake, got back in there, and made the play of the game for the Toronto Argonauts. And Chad Kelly, who came on and led them back, can take a knee as the Argos can sense their 18th breakup title. Winnipeg can only watch as the hopes of a three-peat fade away. What an extraordinary finish here at Mosaic Stadium. The dynasty is denied. And one of the oldest trophies in Canada's history will go to one of its oldest franchises. The Toronto Argonauts have won the 2022 Grey Cup. A state of shock for the Winnipeg side and of jubilation for that man, Chad Kelly, and the Toronto Argonauts. What a finish. This would have looked like Winnipeg, after blocking that kick, would be able to go down and kick the winning field goal. The Bombers must be stunned as their great run of consecutive championships does come to an end. How about Chad Kelly coming off of the bench for the injured McLeod Bethel Thompson and going to work like he belonged. I mean stepped off the bench he did have a chance to warm up while they were taping up Bethel Thompson but came off the bench and was slinging it. And not just the passes will remember that run that big first Absolutely. down run to get it down close. Let's go to Claire Hanna now with the victorious AJ Olet. AJ, you guys were underdogs all season. You came into this game as underdogs. How does it feel to win the Grey Cup? Oh, it feels amazing. I'm so proud of this team right here. We we, we blocked out the media. We blocked out everyone saying that we couldn't beat them. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just proud of the, the team and how we rallied ups and downs as the season was and as the game was. Fucking love you, coach. <laughs> I'm just so fucking proud of this team. But AJ, back on July 2nd, you were cut from this team and you rallied back. How, what does it mean, your journey to get to this point? Uh, just resilience. Uh, just one, just one, one day at a time. Uh, whatever's in front of me, I'm going to attack. And this, this, this team showed the exact same thing this season. You scored two touchdowns in this game. Just what can you say about your own performance? I, I just made the plays that they gave me. Um, the the, the O-line did great. The first one, I'm pretty sure I would have been untouched, but I was a little slow getting to getting to where I was supposed to be. Just, just, just great job across the board with the team. When you think about the ups and downs of this team all season, how did you guys just get to this point and get it done on the biggest stage? As Coach said, we, don't, we didn't have to win a great cup. We just had to win a football game. And that's how we approached today. It was just a football game. Uh, we went back and watched them, and we knew we were the better team. Everybody counted them as, as the better position across the board, except for DBs, and I, I think we came in and, and showed them differently. When you just look at all the excitement around you, a lot of the fans in this crowd, in your favor tonight, how are you going to celebrate? Uh, I'm just going to celebrate with the team. I got my parents and my wife here, and they're going to join us as well. I'm just going to enjoy this night with my brothers. Thank you so much, AJ. Thank you. Okay, Farhan, over to you. All right, with Robbie Smith, what a up and down set of emotions for you on that final drive. You get the sack, you get the penalty, and then you get the block. Take me through it. Yeah, it's just a lot. You just think, uh, keep thinking short memory, short memory. I had a couple penalties today, but I said short memory. We still have an opportunity to win the game, and then we ended up winning the game. It was a team effort. Everybody did what they needed to do. We believed all season long. 
and then now look around, we're all celebrating. So it's just amazing. Up and downs, that's just how our season was, but it finished on up, so thank God. We also had a big defensive play in the first half. Overall, you were able to contain them throughout that first half. What was it that allowed you to do that? Um, the coaching by uh, Coach Mace, um, he did a phenomenal job uh, with us throughout the week, um, teaching us their tendencies and, and what we had to do to keep him contained, not, like, not letting Caleros roll out and make those big plays to show in. Um, so, so the coaching by Coach Mace helped us a lot. No one gave you guys a chance. All this talk about a dynasty and a three-peat. How much did that fuel you? Uh, we felt like the underdogs. Um, obviously, um, everybody thought Winnipeg was going to win. They thought they were going to get their third ring. So um, the fact that we were able to come in here and, and change that, it was, it was amazing. It was nothing short of amazing. When Chad Kelly has to come into the game and you lose your starter, how do you stick through all of that and keep fighting? We don't break. We, we, we already know what we're built of. Injuries happened all season long. Next man up. Big shot. Big shot. Jagarit Davis, six years, six great cups, appearances, and you get your second. What does this one mean to you? Oh, man, it's a blessing. I'm um, able to come out here, fight a hard fought fight. One of the greatest teams there'll be a single uh, no, Winnipeg. We came out, we were resilient, stuff didn't go our way, but we finished. We finished. We finished. We finished. We hung together, all together, we pulled together all year, and this was the outcome. We champions. I know that when Robbie Smith took that penalty, you went over and talked to him. What did you say to keep him in it? Just reload, refocus. We still got one more play to make. One more play to make. Regardless of what the outcome was, we knew what we wanted to do. And God put us in position to make plays, and he did it today. How much were you fueled by the fact that no one really gave you a chance? It was all about Winnipeg 3 -peat. I love being an underdog. I've been on underdog my whole life. And to come out from where I come from to make it to now, I can't have for nothing better. With these guys, I, I got to war with them any day. I take them against anybody. I thank y'all. Guess what? You tell, baby. <laughs> Thanks, Jagarit. Let's head over to Claire Hanna with Enoch Moamba. Hey. Enoch. Enoch, you were so calm before you got that pick, but that was a game-changing play. Tell me about that play. I messed up on, on one, of, one of the plays. One of the things I always preach about when I go to speak at schools, churches, prisons, I go to corporations, I talk about mental toughness, and I had to display it. You know, you gotta, sometimes it's, there's not enough to talk about it, you gotta be about it. But I have some great teammates, coaches that believed in me. When I dropped it, I came to the sideline, I told Coach Ivan, I said, look, I lost it in the air. I told my teammates I lost it in the air, but they didn't even make it a big deal. They said, "Not you go have another opportunity. And they came, and I couldn't make the same mistake twice. But Enoch, you talk about mental toughness. You've been in this league for 10 years, and you only ever made it to one great cup before. Now you've got your first one. How does it feel? I have no words, man. All I've ever wanted was to be great. I put in the work. The truth is, man, sometimes you don't see the result right away. But if you're persistent enough, consistent enough, it'll happen, man. 11 years in, so many things happen over the course of my career. To be able to do it with this group of guys, man, I'm so, I'm elated. We can see the emotion on your face, and I know how many ups and downs, the adversity your team has faced this season. When you look around, just how do you guys come together at the right moment? Character, man. Character, man. I wear a bracelet all the time. It says measured by character. I actually got it from my chaplain from Winnipeg. 11 years ago, I, start, I started spreading it to some of the guys, and that's the kind of guys we got in the locker room, men of character, and we're measured by character. A lot of adversity throughout the course of the season, ups, downs, man. Guys that left, guys that came back, guys that got injured. We stuck through it, man, but we, we're champions, and nobody could ever take that away from us. Enoch, congratulations. Enjoy the moment. Thank you so much, man. Let's head it over to Farhan, who's standing by with Andrew Harris. Andrew, uh, it was all about Zach's injury and your redemption. Uh, re what do you say? Revenge is a dish. Best served cold, a little chilly tonight, and you got yours. Yeah, it was chilly. Um, I mean, my teammates today, man, were unbelievable. It was an emotional roller coaster, up and down. Special teams are the factor. Defense, offense, all, all, all contributed. And uh, I'm just so proud of my, my teammates. Uh, this group of guys, you know, this, this, this year has been a roller coaster. Um, you know, starting off, and, and we, we came together at the right time. And we beat a hell of a good football team today. The Bombers played amazing today. And, and honestly, I, I, that could have went either way. Um, 
just shocked and Paul right now. I, I love these guys. I know that it really was a team effort. You know, you, you worked in there with AJ, but you know, you really got these guys going. You were part of their motivation. Did you sense that? I mean, I, anytime on the field, I just want to make impact plays, right? I've, I've always said that from the get-go. Um, so with any kind of energy or motivation or um, leadership I can bring to the table, I'm all here for it. Last one I'll ask you is just Chad Kelly having to come into the game. You lose McLeod, who's been your leader all year. How did you still believe? Chad's been making plays all year in practice. Anytime he's gotten in, he's made plays. And uh, we have full faith in, in all three quarterbacks on our team. So, you know, he had that big scramble for the first down. He made some crazy throws in, in tight windows. And, you know, he's a ball. He's got a bright future for him. Last year, we thought, what a perfect way for Andrew to walk away from this game. And now, Don't do it. I'm Don't not, do not going to ask you, but when are you going to make your decision and what's going to take you there? I'm going to enjoy this right now. And we'll go. We'll see. We'll see what happens, uh, you know, in a couple months. Thanks, Andrew. Congratulations. Thanks so much. Appreciate you, man. Celebration continues. Andrew Harris got his three-peat at the expense of his old team that was looking to do the same. And Harris, the Argos, pinball Clemens on the right. Oh, he's won a great cup as a player, a few of them. He's won it as a head coach in 2004. And pinball is a great cup champion as a general manager as well. Well, just a, a lot of a lot of storylines to talk about in this one. I, I just think Chad Kelly coming off the bench. And going four of six for 43 yards, that huge 20-yard run, that was just how you start a career. I mean, how many teams in the Canadian Football League are now looking at Chad Kelly differently than they did when he was the backup all year with to McLeod Bethel Thompson? Robbie Smith, I mean... This is what this game is all about. When you, when you make a mistake, which everybody does, what do you do the very next play? And you heard how his teammates rallied around him, how the Toronto Argonauts took care of each other. They had each other's back in those key moments, and it was Robbie Smith. And you talk about the character plays on both sides. On both sides, Winnipeg responding. As we see the, them done so often this season. And, oh. and, 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 and someone like Nick Hallett and a key field goal that would have put it away and, and blocking that one. Winnipeg full of character players, but the Argos demonstrated, as you talk about Robbie Smith, that they have lots of character as well. No question, Rod. And there's a great moment. And I'm telling you right now, McLeod Bethel Thompson is saying to Chad Kelly, hey, you came on and raised, you rose your, raised your play to the moment. Chad Kelly looked like he belonged, looked like he can be a starting quarterback in this league. This is a pressure cooker. You're in the championship game. You're down on the scoreboard. You drive the field and put it in the end zone. And McLeod Bethel Thompson getting his second Grey Cup ring, but he didn't play in the game five years ago. Ricky Ray did. He was the starter in this game. Chad Kelly coming on to, to help him out too and lead them back to this victory. Welcome to the 2022 Grey Cup Awards and Trophy presentation. To present the awards for most outstanding player and most outstanding Canadian, your host, Saskatchewan's own Darren Dutitian. Thank you very much. Was that a football game or was that a football game? I want to thank the city of Regina, a great place to be born. The province of Saskatchewan, a great place to be raised. You guys were outstanding hosts all week. And now it is my pleasure to announce the most outstanding player in the 2022 Great Cup game, Enoch Mwamba. This is unbelievable. I, I, 11 years. 11 years. 11 years. I signed with this team, I met right there. He told me, you're not going to be champs. He told me I was going to cry like this. 
Look at me. It's not even real. Those are those are victory tears, though. Hey, victory tears. Man, I can't believe this. All these guys right here, man. All these guys right here. These are the guys. These are the reason why I'm here. Listen. All the sweat equity. All the hard work. All the ups and the downs. And I'm just talking about this game. And now you are a champion. All I ever wanted was to be great. And I got some great guys around me. And you know, <laughs> that that that's beautiful um and i'm glad that you're still here because for only the second time ever the most outstanding player in the Grey Cup also happens to be the most outstanding Canadian in the Grey Cup, Enoch Mwamba. I have to ask you, thank you, by the way. This, this, is, this is an emotional moment. Your teammates are loving it too. I, I do have to ask you a little bit about the game, if you don't mind. At what point in time, though, with this football team, I know you guys played on the 4th of July. You ended up losing to the Bombers by a single point. At what point in time with this team did you start thinking, you know what, we got some business. You know, we, we, we're, we're playing our best football. We can win this thing. Listen. We walked into this game with total confidence. We knew what we had as a team. Everybody on that, in that locker room believed. We knew that the odds were against us, but we knew that when we crossed that white line, those white lines in between whistles, we knew what kind of team we had. And I just want to thank God, thank all of my teammates. We did it, we chance forever. Forever. Enoch Mwamba. The most outstanding player and the most outstanding Canadian. All right. The 14th commissioner of the Canadian Football League, Mr. Randy Ambrosi. And honestly, we've known each other for so long, I have a hard time separating player from commissioner. This was an unbelievable game. Yeah, remarkable. And it took a long time to get the Grey Cup here to Mosaic Stadium. And the, the province and the city and Ryder Nation waited a long time to host the game in this beautiful stadium. But this, this game did not disappoint. And, you know, congratulations to the Argonauts for the big win and congratulations to the Bombers they have been an amazing team they're an amazing franchise and there there are great days ahead for them yeah I, I like dynasties they represent excellence and they have an excellent football club and they were right there to the end I, I am overwhelmed by Enoch Mwamba too though yeah you know what it is so it is so such a pleasure to see such a great person who's also happens to be a great football player and getting uh, all that he deserves. Boy, does he ever. All right, you've got some business to take care of. This is the best part of your job, I'm sure. I'll let you do that. Good evening, uh, bonsoir, Canada. On behalf of the Canadian Football League and the Canadian Football League Board of Governors, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to award the 2022 Grey Cup to the winning team, the Toronto Argonauts.
team celebration. All sorts of emotions for the Toronto Argonauts. We saw that with Enoch Mwamba, all the tears. And first saying to Claire Hanna, he, all he could talk about was the mistake he made earlier, failing to make an interception. But he more than made up for that. And what a terrific game he had, that Argonaut defense. Just so many different stories of why this Toronto team was able to end the run of a great Winnipeg Blue Bomber well, team. Like, like Dutchie said, just a great football game. The, you know, at the end of the day, the Canadian Football League came through again and put on a tremendous show. Those players on the field battled. The Winnipeg Blue Bombers went down swing. They went. They, they didn't. They didn't quit. They had a, a chance for a game-winning field goal, and a play was made by Robbie Smith. But this is a three-phase game, Canadian football, and it's for them right now. It's family. The journey has ups and downs, big time. You saw Enoch Mwamba with his kids and his family. They go through those ups and downs together. And right now they're sharing it in a moment they'll never forget. There's a certain irony in this given the way the season started, as you recall. A lot of East-West matchups in the East Division, let's face it, was an embarrassment at the start of the season. And it gradually changed. I mean, the Argonauts especially picked up after a slow start, finished with a winning record, did well against some, but nearly, nearly beat Winnipeg in the regular season. It was a close game. And Hamilton, for example, able to beat the Blue Bombers, Montreal did. So it was a little bit of balance restored. But the, the thing I enjoy about this league, regardless of who ends up winning it, is there are certain assumptions you dare not make. You don't know, even coming into a championship game. We've seen it before. We've seen it before with the Argonauts. They've been big underdogs before and managed to celebrate this. But take nothing again uh, away from Winnipeg. It's just one of the great teams we've seen. Oh, absolutely. And, and that organization will be in the hunt again next year. But full credit to a team, as you mentioned, got off to a bit of a slow start in the regular season. But eight wins down the stretch. Ryan Dinwiddie back-to-back finalist for coach of the year he gets his first cup as a head coach and yes with Brian Dinwiddie who lost a start at quarterback a sudden start for Winnipeg back in 2007 he gets to savor a championship let's go back to Darren petition all right thank you very much Rod coach congratulations that was a hell of a game it sure was I mean that's probably going to go down to one of the best big cups you know finishes in history right this the injury to the McLeod, Chad going in there, then the, the block field goals, right? And the penalty, you know, we got him stopped down there. And an awesome game. I got to thank my wife first off, my wife and my kids. I spent a lot of time away from with this job. And without her, I'm not here. I'm not going to win this football game. Um, I really appreciate that. And I, I know what you guys go through. I see the sweat equity, the time, the effort, watching Enoch up there crying. How, how, how about yourself? This has been a hell of a journey for you, too. Your first ever start in the CFL, you were in the Great Cup, and you were thrust into the quarterback position. 14 years later, second year as a head coach, now you win it. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, you know, I got to give our hats off to our players, right? We've, we fought through a lot of adversity, especially today, and uh, that was a team win. They didn't panic, right? We showed how mature we became uh, as a football club, so. I got to thank my players, and um, they did a heck of a job. Right. It is awfully hard to win one. It's really hard to win two. Almost unprecedented to win three. People were talking about the dynasty, the Bombers, the five-and-a-half-point favorites going into this game. At what point in time? Was it the 4th of July when you guys lost to them by a point that you thought, we can not only hang with these guys, we can beat these guys? Or when was it? Well, I think we felt like that. We let that one slip. We get a you know, slip out of our hands and a chance to win that game. So we just when we were 4-5, and five, we said, hey, let's go 1-0, and oh, right? And then the next week, we want to go 2-0. and oh. So if you look at our last 10 or 11 games, they've been pretty long impressive. So... Uh, you know, that shows you where we, you know, light bulb went on and we started focusing better. I really thought you had the better of the play in the first half, and then the second half comes around and, and it was just madness. Congratulations, Coach. I'm really happy for you. That, that, that was fantastic. Yeah, what a game. Still can't get over how good that game was. It was fantastic. Go <laughs> on, As another extraordinary stat, the Argos have now won seven straight breakup appearances. They win this one in stunning style. We're going to hear from the panel their thoughts on this memorable game and the head coach of the Bombers, Mike O'Shea, as well.